Hey everyone, welcome back to part 17 of my Create Mod series. Now today I'm going to show you guys on how to use all of the fluid mechanics inside of the Create Mod. If you enjoy this video, definitely feel free to like, definitely feel free to subscribe. I know this has been a requested video for quite a while now, so anyways, let's hop right into it. So the very first thing that we're going to talk about are the basics. So let's go through a couple basic crafting recipes, and then we'll go to uh, much more advanced machines, uh, of course starting with very basic ones in the beginning. So. The first thing that we're going to go ahead and craft, so let's grab all of these materials, and a wrench is going to be super helpful in fluids. And I have a creative motor, this is just personally for me so I can power certain devices, but let's go ahead and craft a fluid tank. Now a fluid tank is two copper casings, two copper nuggets, and a uh, piece of glass, and that creates two fluid tanks. So this is a way to store liquids. The next thing we're going to craft is a fluid pipe, so this is just a way to basically transport liquids. So two copper sheets and a copper ingot creates eight of these guys. We're also going to craft a mechanical pump, which is a fluid pipe and a cog wheel. So a mechanical pump is basically a way to pull liquids through pipes. You'll kind of see as, uh, as we go through our machines. The next thing that we're going to craft is this copper valve handle, which is going to have a use about halfway through this video, but I want to craft it now because this is a very basic, kind of like hand crank type of uh, object that you can craft inside of fluids. So it's three copper sheets and an andesite alloy. So right here we have a very basic create mod machine. So let's go ahead and run through this. So at the very right side, we have a fluid tank right here. So this is going to store our liquid, which are liquids, of course, water. And we have a hole of water right here connected to some fluid pipes. And then we have a mechanical pump that's, of course, connected to the fluid tank. So the mechanical pump will allow you to pull liquids through fluid pipes. So fluid pipes alone, you cannot just pull liquids through. You need at least a mechanical pump. And then our mechanical pump has a cogwheel, which is going to be powered by our creative motor in a few moments. But you can power it between like encased fans, water wheels, uh, absolutely any power source. Now, real quick, I want to show a quick little tip before we get this machine up and running. And that is with fluid tanks and with uh, fluid pipes, you can actually right click on the side and it will make it kind of like a glass uh, side. So you can actually see the liquids flowing through. Same as the fluid tank, you can shut it off or you can open it up. Super useful for if you're trying to figure out why a machine's not working, you can actually open it up and see if the liquid's even transporting the way that you would like. So I've also written out over here the max range is 16 blocks. Now that is for this mechanical pump. This mechanical pump can only pull liquids from 16 or less blocks away. So if you do have something that's like 17 or more blocks, then you're going to want to have more mechanical pumps than just a single one, maybe halfway through, and that will go ahead and help you out. So let's go ahead and get this machine up and running. So let's go ahead and attach our creative motor right here. And you're going to see our liquid, which is our uh, water, is going to be pulled through the pipes. It's going to be sent into the mechanical pump. And then once it gets here, eventually, it's going to be placed right inside the mechanical pump like so. Now, if this is ever not working for you for any type of liquid, you're going to want to look at your mechanical pump. You can see that right here I have an arrow that's pointing at this fluid tank. That means that the liquid is going from this side all the way to this side. If it's rotated like this, it's actually going to be pulling liquids out of the fluid tank and sending it back in, which is, of course, not what we want. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So real quick, let's talk about fluid tanks, because fluid tanks are kind of a unique block inside of the Create Mod. You can actually expand fluid tanks vertically, just like so. So you can see this is a 1 by 1 by 3 or you can actually expand them uh, basically horizontally. So you can see that this is a very flat fluid tank that's made up of nine fluid tanks. And you can even expand them both vertically and horizontally. So if you wanna have very large tanks to hold a ton of lava, a ton of water, a ton of milk, a ton of honey, chocolate, anything like that, you can totally do that by just building them side by side. It's basically like the smeltery inside of Tinker's Construct. So let's say that you have a bucket of a type of liquid or you have a potion that you would like to go ahead and put inside of a fluid tank. Of course, it's not going to be inside of the ground over there. You don't want to have to build pipes and everything to pull it in. You can actually use an item drain. So let's go ahead and craft one. It's just an iron bar and a copper casing. And we'll go ahead and throw these guys in like so. Makes an item drain. And then you could see if I grab, for example, a water bucket and I right click on the item drain. It will place the liquid in here, and then I have a mechanical pump that's now going to pump it right into this fluid tank. You can also do this with water bottles or any type of bottle. You could just right click and it's going to place it right inside the item drain. So you can technically store potions by doing this as well. So that's going to be super useful in the future when we're doing our potion maker video, which will probably be in a couple weeks. Uh, you're going to see on how we can actually have multiple potions be brewed for ourselves as well. 
So we've talked about on how to store our liquids, so let's talk about how we can dispense them. And one way is actually with a spout. Now, a spout just needs a depot or a belt or something underneath, and whenever it sees an item that it can place a liquid inside, it will just place it right inside. So let's go ahead and craft a spout. It's a fluid tank, a piece of dried kelp, and a copper nugget. So we'll craft that really quick, and it turns into a spout. Now, we have a glass bottle right here, so you can kind of see that I'm kind of pushing towards like potion making and stuff like that. But again, it can be even a bucket inside of this. You're going to right click, place it on the depot or have a conveyor belt bring it in and it's going to immediately fill it to whatever, uh, whatever source block that you have stored inside the spout. So let's get into some more advanced techniques. So we're going to start talking about smart fluid pipes and other ways of transferring multiple liquids through the same exact pipes. Now the very first one, this is a very bad design, but it's to show you on how this works, is we have a smart fluid pipe. And you can see right now it's attached to only allow lava through. So this is not allowing our water to go from our fluid tank and place it into uh, this hole that we have dug in the ground. So before we go ahead and fix this, let's go ahead and craft one of these guys. It's a brass sheet, a fluid pipe, and an electron tube. So a little bit more expensive. And it turns right into a smart fluid pipe. Now, right now, we have it set to a filter of lava. So think of this exactly like filtering brass funnels. So if we want to have water go through here, we're going to have to change our filter to water. And now you will see there's already water particles going through that it will eventually get to this pipe and it will start dispensing it into the ground. So this is a very unique design in order to do, in order to do this, but this is going to be very useful for much more advanced machines. So let's move on to another way of doing this. Another way of doing this is a fluid valve. So let's go through the crafting recipe. It's a shaft, a fluid pipe, and an iron sheet, and that turns right into a fluid valve. Now, let's walk through what a fluid valve actually does, and let me walk through this system as well. So on the right side, you can see that we have a hole of water currently that's currently being sucked into the tube and then gets stuck at this fluid valve. Now, on the other side, we have a bunch of lava that's also getting sucked through the tube and it's getting stuck at this fluid valve. So right here, we've created basically like a junction that where these two pipes collide, and then we also have a mechanical pump that's sucking the liquid, no matter what liquid it is, this direction and is going to place it inside of this hole. Now, if we had these fluid valves off, the water and the lava would run into each other, it would cause a bunch of issues, and it'd be very hard to kind of pick which liquid we'd like to use. So with this fluid valve, you can see that our arrows are currently placed so that they're going this direction and not horizontally. So if we right click on this, uh, or well, shift right click on this copper valve handle, whoops, we can actually send our liquid through and you'll see it'll go in this direction and it's going to get stuck right here when it goes in this area because of this fluid valve and it will get sucked this direction and go down these pipes so it ends up coming out of the ground. So there you go, you can see that we've now chosen to have lava. So let's shut this guy off. It will immediately stop our lava. And let's say now we want water. So we're just gonna shift uh, right click to go ahead and turn this guy on. And our water is gonna start flowing through our tubes. There you go, now you can see it is going. And it's gonna keep moving. Now you're gonna see of course that we have all of our mechanical pumps powered by cog wheels. I do have a gearbox right here just to save some space. Uh, but let's go ahead and look at this a little bit further, because right now this is a pretty like labor intensive way of pulling two different types of liquids. So if you look at this, you can actually see that these fluid valves are powered just like a gearbox. Now they don't need power, this is a way of just changing direction. And depending on if it's spinning clockwise or counterclockwise, that depends on if the liquid is going through or not. So I'm sure that a couple of you guys are already thinking that you could use like gear shifts and stuff like this to actually have this process fully automated to whatever you are looking to do. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is a hose pulley, and this is going to be for pulling large amount of liquids out of like an ocean or something along those lines. So let's go through the crafting recipe. It's a copper casing, a shaft, dried kelp, fluid pipe, and a copper sheet, a little bit more expensive, and it turns right into a hose pulley. Now this is going to be super... Uh, similar to the elevator design that we have done and that's because this is basically the fluid version of it So right here, especially if you've watched my elevator video, you're looking at this going wow That's the exact design We have a power source going into a gear shift and a gear shift going into a hose pulley And of course the gear shift changes whatever speed is going uh, either clockwise or counterclockwise So when we flick this lever, it's going to drop the hose pulley into the liquid send the liquid through these fluid pipes uh, this mechanical pumps of course pumping that liquid and then send it into this gigantic fluid tank that we have so let's go ahead and turn this on and you will see that now our hose pulley is going to be lowered into this liquid 
Now, this liquid eventually will be drained completely because this is not a large enough source. Uh, but if you do have a large enough source of water, for example, it will be considered infinite and you will have infinite water for your time in Minecraft. So just to run through, you can see that the liquid is going through uh, the pipes right here and it's being placed into here. Now, you're going to notice that it's not really making much of a difference here, and that's because this uh, fluid tank is so gigantic, but you can see it's actually pulling because these blocks of water are actually being removed. So if I left this here long enough, there would stop being liquid inside of this hole. So the last machine I want to talk about is a portable fluid interface. Now this is a lot similar to the portable storage interface that I've done in my farming videos. The only difference is it transports liquid. So let's go over the crafting recipe. It's an andesite funnel and a copper casing. And that turns right into a, sorry, I didn't see it, portable fluid interface, just like that. Now, right here, we have a really bad design, but this is designed so that I could show you the uses and then you can incorporate it in whatever design that you are working on. So on our right side, we have a fluid tank attached to a mechanical pump, and we have this lovely spinning device that has lava currently inside and a, uh, a portable fluid interface on the outside. So let's go ahead and click this guy on, and you'll see that now that there are one block in between, that it will actually transfer all of its liquid and place it right into this fluid tank. Now, you're probably wondering, well, what uses is this? It seems pretty useless. This could probably be used for, if you thought about it long enough, for the mining machine that we've made several episodes ago. That if we run into water, if we run into lava, that we could just drain it all, throw it into a fluid tank, and then keep mining. So that's something to think about if you want to start upgrading our mining machine. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, I have to admit, I've already recorded this, uploaded it, and edited it and everything and put it onto YouTube as scheduled. And I realized my audio corrupted halfway through. So that was a waste of like three hours. Uh, but anyways, I've re-recorded it, so it'll still be out on Friday. But if you guys enjoy this video, please drop a like, please subscribe. I know this was a really requested video. Uh, Polart should be releasing a video in the next couple of days, so I'll have his channel linked down below, and then I'll eventually link his video once he releases it, and it's going to be about fluids as well. So I recommend checking it out. You might uh, cover some things that I might have missed. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys all in the next one.